I would like to thank Pastor Sam Braga for his invitation to fill his pulpit today. It's a very real pleasure to be worshipping again in the Penrith Church. We always enjoy coming to Penrith and um, though we have experienced from time to time uh, some of the extremes in weather that you are able to present here. This time it happens to be one of those cold uh, winter mornings but it's very warm here inside our church. I hope it's not too warm that you might feel a little comfortable to be dozing off. We'll try to keep you on the ball as we go through our message today. I thought during the week I wouldn't be making it today. <clears throat> um, even pastors have uh, contact with the community so that we share in the influences of the community when the bacteria are raging. And um, <clears throat> my wife and I, we live in a caravan at the moment and uh, we are not really well protected against the weather. So uh, we've been really feeling it. <clears throat> we decided some time ago that we would try to prepare ourselves for the inevitable that was coming, Lynn. You're losing your hair, I've still got mine, but it is going rather grey. And I'm having to recognise these days that I belong to that tribe called the Grey Nomads. Uh, it, it is with some reluctance, but uh, we have to accept the facts of life. That time passes on, and uh, we... And I have good news for every one of you. Every day, you're gaining a little older in your experience. And those days add up into years, and um, you're getting older too. Not just me. <laughs> so we decided that we would try to find a place where we could settle down in our retirement. And my wife tends to be a little bit on the fussy side when it comes to what she wants in a house. So she couldn't find what she wanted, so we decided that we would build a house. Oh, what fateful choice. <laughs> we uh, spent over 12 months with a company to finally have everything in place, and we were just about to part with our money when the newspapers declared that the company had gone bankrupt. You remember the story about Beechwood, don't you? Well, we were building a Beechwood home. So we had to start all over again. And so another 12 months went by as we <laughs> finalised with another company, this time with Masterton. And Masterton have built us our home. And I was going around the other day, just picking up a little bit of the rubbish, and I have here a block of wood. Now you would say, well, Pastor, what on earth are you bringing your rubbish from your house to our church for? This block of wood spoke a language to me I want to share with you this morning. If you look very closely at this block of wood, it's no ordinary block of wood. It's actually layer upon layer upon layer of what we call three-ply. Now, three-ply is uh, wood that is made into three sections, three ply. And you can bend it. In fact, if you bend it enough, you can even break it. And um, I said to the builder, what on earth are you putting this as the mainstay of our house for when it's just a whole heap of three ply that's been glued together? And he said to me, Pastor, he said, that block of wood is twice as strong as a normal block of wood. It is twice as durable, twice as strong. Though in a sermon the other day, I had a builder come to me, he was an old-fashioned builder, and he said, no way in the world, Pastor, it's not as strong and it's not as durable. But this is what my builder told me. And buildings happen to change from time to time, don't they? They use different materials, they use synthetics. And I don't know about this block of wood, but as I looked at that, I thought to myself, how much like the church this block of wood is. Now you say, how on earth is the church like that block of wood? Well, I see us as all individuals. We are all pliable. In fact, many of us experience brokenness. 
Sometimes under the pressure of life, we, we bend with the issues that come into our circumstances and we become broken. We become fractured. But the good news today is that when we are glued together by the Holy Spirit, when we are pressed together by the power of God and glued by His Spirit, we gain a strength that is extraordinary strength. And I see this as a picture of God's church. This is why as individuals we come together to worship Him. Because when we come together to worship Him, His Spirit is the one that presses us together and makes us strong. And to me that's the good news. I found another piece of material. It's pretty ugly, isn't it? But it's strong. You can't bend it. It's steel. Just like some people in the church. <laughs> I'm not looking at anyone. <laughs> but you know what I mean. There are some people who are just unbendable. Some people who don't have a pleasantness about their appearance, maybe. Some people who are just so strong in the faith. And we need these kinds of individuals, don't we? And this piece of material, it's a metal that sits on the roof rafters. And this piece of stuff here sits like that. And then the metal roof sits on the top of it. Have I got it the right way around or is it that way? I'm not sure. I'm no builder, so I really don't know. But I know they put it up underneath the roof. And you know, it's so, again, so much like our church, isn't it? Some people are so strong and so unbendable and there are other people who are soft and fluffy and they just enable us to stay warm in the church family. I'm not going to ask you who's which and which in this church, but you know what I mean. And I see that as a wonderful picture of our church. And I believe that today we have, as a Seventh-day Adventist church, we have a very strong system. We have a very strong structure. We have an organisation of which we can be proud of, an organisation that facilitates the mission of the church. I'm very proud to be a Seventh-day Adventist today. How about you? And yet, as strong as our system is, as strong as our organisation is, what kind of impact does the Seventh-day Adventist church have on the community of Sydney. That is my focus. That is my vision. That somehow God's church and the strength of God's church will more effectively and more efficiently reach the community that surrounds us. I believe that today we need the power of God in motivating us and facilitating our movement into the community as never before. How about you? You're not so sure. Well, let me remind you, we are actually living in the last days of Earth's history. And I believe that our, now is our days of opportunity. Now is the time when we need to be finding the men and women who are searching for a true relationship with the God of heaven. And we need the Spirit of God as we've never needed Him before. We need Him today. And I want to talk a little bit about this with you this morning. As I agonize over how God's church is empowered in today's world, I thought, why not have a look at when Jesus established the church? How did the church meet the then known world? Did the church meet the then known world? Do you know if it did or not? Indications from the writers of Scripture indicate that the church did. The church reached the then known world. How did it do it? I want to explore this with you in the scriptures today. Come with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1.